Hi, good morning, everyone. Can I please invite you all to stand? Good morning to everyone viewing online. It's so good to see everyone here. Just want to invite you to worship God with me. So firstly, you can start by just saying something to God, whispering something to God. Get your heart in the right posture. Just welcome him into your heart. Welcome him into this room. Come on and 
your death, burial, and resurrection this morning. We praise you for who you are, the sacrifices that was made. We declare our love for you, oh God. We love you, Jesus, because you first loved us. Not because we knew who you were, oh God. You called us a people unto yourself. We declare our devotion to you, oh God. You are our first love. Church, let's give him the praise. Today is Good Friday. He's so much worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our love, oh God. We belong to you. You belong to us. Our hearts cry out for you, oh God. You are everything that we need for life and for godliness, oh God. You are every ear that we breathe. We need you, Lord. We cannot do life without you. Oh God, draw us unto your presence today, even as we come before you, Lord, to declare our love. We receive of you, oh God. We declare you are our first love. You are our first love. In any way we've fallen off and turned back, if we have not expressed our devotion for you, we ask for forgiveness. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus, forgive us for not understanding, for taking the time out to appreciate what you did for us, oh God. Forgive us for not acknowledging who you are. Forgive us, Lord. So today we take the time to declare our love for you and our appreciation and our gratitude for what you did on Calvary. In Jesus' name. Lord, even as we continue to pray, Father, even as we are about to begin this service, we thank you for all those who are present in our midst. Prepare their spirits for what you are about to do today. Open their hearts to receive of your ministry of the Holy Spirit, to fellowship with you, to experience the love of the Father. We thank you, Jesus, for your grace that is with us today. We commit this service to you that it may go well. We commit the singers, the anointed singers, oh God, or senior pastor, with the word. We thank you that what you're about to do today, it will change our hearts. It will change our hearts. And we declare we are ready to receive of that word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Welcome. Thank you, singers. Welcome, everyone. For those of you who are online, welcome online. Today is Good Friday. And those in the house, how are you feeling this morning? Great. I'm seeing some faces I haven't seen in a long time. Hi, sis. Um, I'm looking around. I'm seeing faces I haven't seen in a long time. So it's, it's good to have you right now. We would like, a matter of fact, oh, thank God you're still there. We're going to do a little walking around. So I want you to go and greet everyone that you're seeing in our midst. We want you to feel welcome. You are at home. You are at Church on the Rock. Welcome to Church on the Rock. We are a family, and we are learning how to be hospitable. We are learning how to love each other. We are learning how to care. So I want you to just walk around, introduce yourself to somebody you don't know, look at them in the eye, hug them possibly, come out of your comfort zone. Okay, let's try that. Let's do something different today.
We want to praise the Lord today. Yeah? Let's dance. Let's dance. We want to dance in the Lord. In His presence, there's fullness of joy. Yes, sis. Yes, sister Rachel. Go, girl. Yes, we can enjoy ourselves in the Lord. Nothing is wrong. That's right. Are we happy? Are we happy? Some of us need to dance. That's how you get rid of that heaviness. Let's get up and dance. Yes? Yes. Right? Yes. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. We thank you for life. We thank you for joy. Oh, Jesus, we receive it today. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, sister. I love it. I love it. people are happy sometimes that's what we need so those who are online you're missing out okay so welcome again the only notices we have for today being friday is that we have midnight prayer at 12 o'clock online you can join on zoom on youtube and then on sunday we have we have um, apostles speaking. So it would be a good service as well. So those are our notices for today. We do have a time where we're going to give unto the Lord in worship. This is a part of our duty and our act and love that we show for the Lord. We give him back what he has given to us to be a blessing to this house and to be a blessing to others. Wow, my dear sister, I haven't seen you in a very long time. I don't even remember your name. This one's sitting here. Faye? Faye? Nice to have you. Nice to have you. Lovely. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you are our provider. You have taught us what it means to love in our giving, in that you would not withhold your only son to pay the wages for the wages of sin is debt. And so you came and you paid the price for us, giving your most beloved. There's nothing that you with withhold from us that love you. So we're grateful for that demonstration of love. And we shall back you today in our giving. And we give back unto you what you've given unto us. So even as we do this in our demonstration of love, we come forward knowing that this is nothing compared to what you have done. So we give with open hearts, willingness, and with full joy, thanking you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. You may come and be led of the ushers.
be a blessing to us, that we're able to be a blessing to this house. So we ask that you would multiply all that was given, that you would bless. You would bless those who would have given today and those who are not able to give that you would bless them. May their store baskets be full, oh God, overflowing with abundance. And we cut off every curse of poverty in this house. We cut off every canker worm in the name of Jesus. Every curse be broken through the very act of tithing. We cut you off now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We have a ministry today in dance. Let us prepare our minds and our hearts for what will be done today. As we receive the ministry in dance right after, we'll have a ministry in song. Then the choir will come up right after. Can we just give the Lord some praise? Rejected, often criticized Hid behind the childhood lies And everything has changed Since the blood Oh, since the blood Yes, yeah, since the blood Oh, all the blood Hope was falling from the air Reaching, but no one is there. Screaming, quiet, no one cares. I might as well have died. But the blood falling on. But the time oh Oh, oh, oh. 
Hallelujah. Absolutely beautiful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, that was so beautiful. That was so beautiful. May we never get so familiar with the blood of Jesus. May we never be so familiar. We've gotten too used to, too used to what Jesus have done. Jesus, we repent. So even now, God, we thank you for that ministry. Bless them even now. Bless them even now in Jesus' name. Bless them. We cover them under the blood of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, work through them, God, even as they express love for you, oh, God. It's love for you. Jesus, cover them in Jesus' name. Now we have ministry from the choir, but also, would you take a moment to just look on the flowers? Thank you for the flower ministry. <laughs> They've done an awesome work. Oh, you can. 
until. Will you just stand to your feet and join with them, believing that he said it. We believe it. Hallelujah. army of God is the army of God in the house this morning stand to your feet and shout unto the commander in chief who is the commander hallelujah hallelujah there is a commander amen do you know his name I don't hear you I don't hear you glory to God you may be seated Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The commander in chief told me I'm still on the throne. Anybody need a reminder? Anybody need a reminder that he's still on the throne? Some of us do. I know I needed it. So I'm jumping ahead on my message this morning. Anybody going through things? And you're like, when God? Where are you, God? Is me one? I guess everybody perfect. Can you just help me out here? Rub off some of the perfectness on me. And I'm there some weeks ago, troubled about a few things. You ever troubled about a few things? Praying about a few things? Waiting on God for a few things. I went to bed with it. And I woke up with the word, Diane, I'm still on the throne. I am still on the throne. So, and that word, there are some other things that he told me, but for now, that word was a rhema word to me. Anybody need a, word, need a rhema word? Anybody need a rhema word? Where the word come off the pages of the Bible and come into your spirit. And every day since then, 
No matter what is storming around me, he's still on the throne. Ruling and reigning over all. Those are his words to me. I rule and I reign over all. I am magnificent, sovereign over all. So no matter what you're going through, Diane, I can't talk for Uno. He says, I will take you through no matter the season. Press on, says God. He said to me, I know your name. I have called you and chosen you from you in your mother's womb. I have great plans for you. Press on. I will make a way where there seems to be no way. That became my rhema word. Who needs a rhema word this morning? So this morning is what we call Good Friday. My God, I'm coming from the days, Prophet Carla and Pastor Dorothea, where this church would be like full. But you know what? Just look at yourself and say, praise the Lord, I'm in the house this morning. I'm in the sanctuary of God, hallelujah. But this morning, I am not crucifying the Lord anymore. He died and he rose again. And he's seated at the heavenlies, in the heavenlies, at the right hand of the Father. Somebody praise him. He's no longer in the grave. So I'm not putting him back on the cross. The cross has a work. But as the song says, it is done. It is finished. Do we know that? Do we know it? So walk with me in the Bible. I didn't give anybody in the overhead any scriptures. I'm very naughty that way. Praise the Lord. But they're going to follow me, and you're going to follow me too. Amen? From 2024, we entered as a church into a deeper understanding of what covenant means. Anybody recognize that we have been on covenant and faith, a faith walk with God? And a few Sundays ago, another instruction came to us. It came from the Lord through a woman of God. And the Lord is saying to this church that he's raising up an army. But he's also asking us to go through four months of Gilgal. Now I'm going to touch a little bit on Gilgal because some people may not understand. But recognize that there's a time frame to do this. How many months? Four years? Four months. If God says that, God means that. So it's up to us to walk that Gilgal experience. It's up to us, not just at church on a Sunday, but to walk a Gilgal experience every day of our lives. And when we come in here on a Sunday, we'll hear teachings, but don't wait on us to bring you to that Gilgal experience. What is Gilgal? Gilgal is a cutting away of the flesh. It is where Moses was told by God to circumcise every male. I was reminiscing on this circumcision. Everybody know what circumcision is? Women, we don't have to do, we don't know about that, but we know about it at the same time. Any mothers in the house with boys? Well, some people don't circumcise, but some do. Circumcision is a painful thing. So, not pretty no painting here right now. It's painful. My last child is a boy. And when I was in the hospital, he was in the hospital. Well, those days, <laughs> eight days I was in the hospital for. Nowadays, as you give birth by, by evening or next morning, they send you home, right? I don't know that luxury. I enjoyed luxury. Eight days in the hospital. Say, woohoo, for past years. All went nothing wrong with you. I just laid on the bed. Nurse, just take the baby when they want to me. And 
Now baby come push right before you and you have to deal with it. Eight days, every child. On the eighth day, I lay down in that hospital bed and heard a baby screaming and knew it was my son. They didn't tell me what time they were going to circumcise him, but I heard a scream. It was a different scream. Pastor Dan, why are you going there? I'm here to tell you that the circumcision of our hearts that God wants us to do, it is going to be painful because it's something that we have held on to very dearly as if it's part of us. But when the song, as we just sang, says, it is done, it is done, but we have a work to do. When you read all of the New Testament, it says, get rid of, get rid of, get rid of. It ain't easy to get rid of something that you've hooked up for years. So it's going to be painful. See, God is a God of plan, purpose, and objectivity. So when God says circumcise every male, it was symbolic of what was to come in, in this New Testament. And it now means circumcise your heart. What is your heart? I'm not even looking at the notes right now. What is your heart? It's not our spirit, church. I'm talking to you online. It's not your spirit. Your spirit was saved when you got born again. That will never change. But our soulish realm, our fleshly realm, it is our heart. It is our will. It is our emotions, our mental thoughts. That needs to be circumcised. It is a part of us that we love to gossip and now we have to stop that and get rid of it and apply the blood that the dancers just dance about. The blood still has power today. But because we're so used to gossiping, because we're so used to tearing down people, because we're so used to so in discord, because we're so used to anger, because we're so used to jealousy, that's going to be painful to get rid of that. So when God says circumcise your heart, he knows it's going to be painful. It's not a one-time thing. It is a daily operation. Say daily. So we were told four months, Pastor Jennifer, four months to get it together. Then we can build an army. Say build an army. So, as I explained a little bit, but my note says it's a rolling away. It is what is rolled off of you which oppressed you. Anybody has been oppressed? Oppressed. Oppressed with all sorts of something. That we come in here and pretend that all is well, but we oppress the same way. God is talking about rolling that away. When he said, I don't see it here, but shame. Shame was nailed to the cross, but we're so shameful about what we're going to, nobody knows. It is, how are you, Rachel? I'm blessed and highly favored. Hallelujah. God bless me with a car, but don't know that inside of you, are like, God, how am I going to pay this? We're not talking about the blessings right now, the material blessings. He said it. It is done. What's done? All of that is done. All of that is done. All of that and then some was nailed to the cross. But we're still walking around with it. And God is saying, I want you, Church on the Rock, to go through your Gilgal experience. To know that all of that and then some is nailed to the cross. And when he cried out, it is finished. It is. It is up to us because bo being born again, again, I, I repeat it, being born again doesn't mean that our emotions were born again. It was our spirit that was born again. You, God is not going to interfere with our emotions. God is not going to interfere with our will. It is we, touch yourself, that need to surrender our will to him, surrender everything to him, but he came and saved us our spirit born in of the spirit 
We're born of the spirit, but our emotions and all that we've ever been through is still there alive. And we have to crucify it. The one crucifixion was done over 2,000 years ago, but we are to crucify our flesh. When our flesh rises up and I want to have up evangelist Jody, I need to say, no, 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 that's my sister in Christ. Are you with me, church? So God doesn't want the same old, same old. God is done with that. So it's a place of circumcision, Gilgal. And at Gilgal in the New Testament, it's a place of circumcision of the heart. A place where dirt, the dirt of our heart is exposed. Because you know what God says? Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who? He that hath? And a? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. You wash your hands every day. I wash my hands before learning to do that. Disinfect. God not talking about that. Pure heart. Pure emotions. Pure Pure, pure. That means it's going to take time to get rid of all the things. It's called, another word for it is the iniquity in our hearts. Again, I will refer to Jody. I can, hi, Jody. Oh, my gosh, you look so good in that red. Girl, I love your shoes. And in your heart, you're like, oh, where should I get that shoes from? Are we familiar with that kind of spirit? Is why she have to show off our long hair. Boy, your hair is lovely. Do we know about that church? Oh my gosh, Jody, it's quiet. Are we aware? Maybe you're not guilty of it, but you've been in company where it's, it happens. God is talking about that. He's talking about that church on the rock. You see, God knows our hearts. You can hide your heart from me and we hide from each other, but we can't hide from God. God knows everything that's going on within us. See? I tell you, God, wake me up and say, I'm still on the throne. And that covers plenty of things. Let me remind you, God is still on the throne, not about provisions either. I'm still on the throne checking out your heart condition. In so much on the throne, church, that when Miriam and Aaron talk about them brother, what did they say? Really? Come on. What did they say? Is why, why marry? What's her, what's her name? In wife. Why marry her? Whatever they said. In one sentence. One sentence. And who does Moses think he is? And they were just talking like me and Jody. Jody. You understand that person? I wonder why they did that. And the Bible says, and God heard. Moses didn't hear. And God heard. I'm here to tell you, church and family of God, that God is still on his throne. He's not deaf. He's not dumb. And he's not blind. And he works in his own time. So he has told Church on Rock, I have given you four months. I don't know what's going to happen after four months. But I, don't, I know I don't want him to catch me. I have not dealt with things that are in me that is not of him. Do I have a witness in this house or online that you want to let God come and find you? Working out your own salvation. I'm not working on Pastor Opal's salvation. I'm working on my own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. There is a Isaiah 66, 1 and 2. This is what the Lord looks on and regards. One who is meek and contrite in heart. And who trembles, who reverences his name and who fears him. That's the same thing as circumcision of the heart. It don't come easy. It is going to be painful. But are you willing and are you ready, church on the rock? It's a leaving behind of the sinful past. Four months the church has been given. He could have said, take the year. Rachel, four months. 
We have plenty of work to do. Let me see. Anybody have plenty of work to do? Thank you, Jesus. Today I'm skipping. So, the place Gilgal, Joshua named it. Remember, I told you I jumped ahead of my message. So, does circumcision really hold significance for God's people today? You get that now? And it holds a significance. So today it's symbolic. Because it's not the circumcision of the male organ. It's the circumcision of our hearts. So we females not getting away. It's our heart. God's people. In God says there's neither male nor female. So we're a holy nation. The holy nation has been called to circumcise our hearts. Every believer, let me see the hands of every believer in the house. We have been delivered of sin. Do you know that? We have been delivered. Shame and guilt was nailed to the cross. Everything else was nailed to the cross. Also, the wrath that God had for us was removed from us as well as punishment for sin. So when we read in Psalm 103:12, David was prophesying really, King David, Psalm 103, verse 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a? I don't hear you. He's a new creation. Oh, the old has passed away. Passed away. It's gone. If, you t- if somebody says somebody passed away, they're gone. So the old has passed away. It's supposed to be dead and buried. But we're still walking around with the old. I wonder if you understand what God is saying. He sees us sitting on his throne, walking around with the old that he says has been removed. We keep picking it up. Anybody know what that means? You come to the altar, you get prayed for, but you go back to your seat and you hug it up. God is saying, enough. So behold, the new has come. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Can you just get, drop down these scriptures? Because as we go through Gilgal, we need to have these scriptures on hand. at Golgotha. So Gilgal is what happened in the Old Testament. But at Golgotha, at Calvary, the place where Jesus was nailed to the cross, where our sin and shame and guilt was nailed to the cross, that's where Gilgal begins. That's where circumcision of the heart begins, at the cross. Jesus nailed it all, but we have, so we have something to do. Today, as I said, we're not nailing him to the cross anymore because he's not dead. Today, we celebrate him as Emmanuel. Emmanuel means what? God with us. God with us, church on the rock and people of God all over the nation and the world. God is with us, and as much as it looks like an Ichabod season, you know what Ichabod is? Some of us who know the Bible know what Ichabod is. When the glory of God departed from Israel, it may look like that, that what's going on in this world, but I'm here to tell you that Emmanuel still rules and reigns. Emmanuel is still on the throne. So what Emmanuel means? He's with us. He is with us. So we need to get that in our heart. Like I tell you, when he woke me up with that, troubled as I am, no more, the trouble is still there. But I am at peace. Anybody want some peace? Anybody want some peace? Anybody want some peace? Can I hear a hallelujah? Hallelujah. It looked like him, look at a funeral. I read a funeral church. This is a rejoicing moment because of what God has done. 
So today we celebrate him. Can you clap on to him who is alive forevermore? The Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ is here. And the word, the name Jesus says, for he shall save. He shall save. It's a continuous saving church. You may get your salvation to go to heaven, but God is continually saving us. It's not a one-time thing. We are to be saved. And when you read Romans chapter 10, 9, and 10, what does it say? Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That word saved means continuous. It's a continuous thing, calling on his name. So it's not one time, even though the one time you may call on him and then probably you're crashing and you die. Who knows? That saves you, but you're alive here. You call on him constantly, not in vain, but in the name of Jesus. Jesus, he shall save his people. So no matter how tired we are, nobody tired. Some honest people around there, glory to God. No matter how tired, how weak and downtrodden we feel, how desperate we want change. My God, I know a family over here wants to see change. How, no matter how desperate we are, God is still on the throne. God is is still on the throne. And God has not forgotten you. I want to encourage you. Lift up your eyes. For Emmanuel is still with you. Emmanuel is still with you. As I said, he told me that. And he said, Diane, I'm able. I am faithful. Some things look like mountains that you can't climb. Anybody know what I'm talking about? For me, mountain bigger than yours or for your one bigger than mine. But to you, your mountain big. Anybody understand what I'm saying? And he said no to me, no matter the mountain, no matter the crosses, no matter the storms, press on, Diane. Do what I call you to do. Anybody ever feel like giving up? God was telling me, press on, for I am bigger than all of that, and I will see you through. I don't know who needs to hear that word, but God is saying, I am bigger than what you are facing, and I will see you through, because God is going to use what you are going through for his glory, hallelujah, because you're going to take a weight of glory that you could not take ordinarily. His weight of glory, you have to pass through the test. So over 2,000 years ago, in submission to his father, the word became flesh. We know the story. Purpose, why did the word become flesh? To bring a new covenant to his people. Are the people of God here? So the question is, what is a covenant? What is a covenant? It's a binding agreement. It's a legal contract. It's a seal between two or more parties. So in the Bible, it's an agreement between God and his people. Say it with me. It's an agreement between God and me because I'm, 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 I'm part of the body of Christ. So let's get personal. It's an agreement between God and me. That agreement, he promises a blessing for obedience. Now that word obedience, that don't click with some people. Can I tell you? Let me be real. When I was young, my, my whole family would say, see the disobedient one here? Is me one? I used to get some licks. Oh, my God. I can't even begin to explain. Thank God my father has gone home to be with the Lord. I used to get it. But I think I did deserve it because I was very disobedient. Thank God I wake up to know what disobedience means. So no more. God promises a blessing for obedience. He also set the terms and conditions of the covenant. In the Old Testament, God made agreements with Noah, Abraham, and Moses. 
But we're going to concentrate on Abram. For Abram, which we know is Abraham, but Abram was his name first. God the Father entered into a blood covenant with him because he wanted to reassure Abram that he, El Elyon, the God most high, will keep his promise. So despite all the obstacles before him, he believed God's promises. Despite all the obstacles before us, we need to believe God. Because despite all the obstacles, um, Abraham, I love to call him that because Abraham obeyed God. And when he did, as I said, he's seated on the throne, he knows everything. He obeyed God. You know what God did? Called him a friend and counted it as righteousness. Can God count on us? Are we that faithful? That's a question you and he need to have a discussion with him. That is, obedience is the essence of faith, church. Are we able to take God at his word? He speaks through his word, and he speaks through your leaders. Are you able to take God at his word? That's a question only you can answer between you and God. Turn with me to, well, write it down, Genesis 15, because you need to do, you need to do your own Bible study. Genesis 15, 7 to 21. That account tells you that Abraham was instructed to do some things with some animals. And then whatever he did, cut the animals in two, lay them out. After he did all of that, under the instructions of God, he fell into a supernatural sleep. He was supposed to do something with God, but God himself put him to sleep. And what happened next is that God alone, God alone, remember what a covenant is, it's between God and his people, between God and somebody. Now God alone walked this covenant in the form of a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch, which was the manifested presence of the glory of God. And God walked through the path of the torn animals. So church on the rock, I wonder if you understand that both parties, Abraham and God, were supposed to do this like walking down this aisle. God put Abraham to sleep and walked it himself. You know what that told me when I read it? I got so excited that God alone is able to keep a covenant. God wants us to keep a covenant. But he says, I can do this. And he was proving something to this now generation. Because this now generation, a covenant was made by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. When he hung on the cross, he took all our sin and it was all nailed to the cross church. That is, look, the covenant, the blood covenant is that. Jesus, did he take us to the cross? He said, we're the justified. As if we have never sinned. We are justified as if we have never sinned. That's what that covenant on the cross did. All he's asking us to do is circumcise our hearts. So when God walked through the torn animals, he was saying, I will bear all that it takes if this covenant is broken. No, God doesn't break covenant. But he knew that mankind can. He knew that mankind. So he just did it himself. So even though Abraham was to do it with him, he made a way. You know the song? The way maker. He made a way, church. He made a way for us. And he made a way 2,000 years ago. What we should have borne, Jesus Christ bore it himself. Hallelujah. Would you praise him right now? He bore it for us or else we would not be saved. We would not be called the righteous. He didn't come to save the righteous, but sinners. And once he saved us, he put on a robe of righteousness. I don't know about you, but I am so happy 
It's a radical thing that God did from Abraham's time till now. Hallelujah. And so he proved to Abraham his unconditional love because it was dependent on God alone to fulfill this covenant. And so the same unconditional love Jesus Christ showed us because when we deserve something, grace stepped in. When we deserve something, mercy stepped in. We deserve to be dead for the wages of sin is what the gift of God is. Hallelujah. So all that the Lord, be, so okay, under the terms of the new covenant, God pledged himself, bound himself together with us as one. So all that he has belongs to us, and all that we have or will ever have belongs to us. Where do we see that in the Bible? Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. Hallelujah. Is there anybody upstairs? Isaiah 43, 2 to 3. The word of God says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you walk through the fires, you shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. For what? I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel. That's the word of God. God was speaking through Isaiah the prophet. When you pass through the waters, let me say the hands of those who are passing through waters, and the waters are muddy and dirty. It's like quicksand taking you and sucking you in. The Lord God Almighty says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. What a mighty God we serve. For what? For what? For I am the Lord thy God. I am the Lord thy God, church. I am the Lord thy God. We need to understand that, that he is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. No one else is Lord, but Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So understand this. God is a God of purpose. He, he is a God of plan. He plans things out. There's nothing that can scratch him head and say, I wonder how we're going to do this. God is a God of plan. In the fullness of time, Jesus came. He didn't come in Abraham's time. He didn't come in Job's time. He didn't come in Isaiah's time. That was written from before the earth was created. In the fullness of time, Jesus came. There's a correct time. There is a correct time. We want to hurry God, but I'm here to tell you there's a correct time. Jesus was on the earth for 30 years before anybody knew who he was. There is a time in God. God don't do anything out of time. Some of us want him, and, and that's what happens. We are not trusting in God and understanding his ways and understand that if we're going through something, there's got to be a reason. We can't hurry God. We can't manipulate him, church. We can't command him. Who are we? Let me just remind you, go back to Job. When Job was going with things and God said, Who? where were you? And until Job repented... Until we walk Gilgal, will we see the glory of God. But when Job repented, the Bible said, that's when God gave him double for his trouble. So you see these scriptures, these stories and scriptures, is it keep me in line, you know, because I'm just like you. God walked to you. Do I'm doing this or doing that? But is the scripture have to line me up? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. The pathway is dark. It looks horrible. You can't even see a way. But thy word is a lamp. It will remind you that the Lord thy God is with you. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. The storms will not overtake you. I can speak to the storm and tell it to be still. When you know the word of God... 
Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Trust ye in the Lord. If we're not trusting in the Lord, then we are going to go off our head. But for the mercies of God, some of us will be walking that street like a madman or woman. But for the mercies of God. But God is wanting us to not just lean on his mercies, but to understand who we are in Christ Jesus, who he has made us to be. He says, it is done. He said it. It is done. It is finished. Everything. It's not just that on the, uh, you see there in writing. Everything that we'll ever go through was nailed to the cross. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. You know how Jesus could get through life when he walked this earth? He knew who he was. He was the son of God. And then he spent time with the father every day. And then when he came out, he just spoke and miracles happened. He wasn't praying. One time he ever prayed. One time. And he said it for your glory when he was raising Lazarus from the dead. Read your Bible. One time he prayed, Father, whatever it is, it is for your glory. Whatever I'm about to do, it's for your glory. Everything else, he came out of the presence of God Almighty and spoke, spoke, and miracles happened. And we are supposed to do greater than he did. Where are those miracles, church? Where are those miracles that we are supposed to be doing? Let me... I'm ahead of my, my message. When we read Jeremiah 32, 38 to 42, let's read it. Jeremiah 32, 38 to 42. Jeremiah. Hallelujah. Jeremiah. Let me see if I can find it quickly. Jeremiah 32, 38 to 42. 38 says, They will be my people, and I will be their God. I will give them integrity of heart and action, so that they will fear me always for their good and for the good of their descendants after them. I will make a permanent covenant with them, I will never turn away from doing good to them. That's the promise of God. And I will put fear of me in their hearts. Hmm. So that they will never again turn away from me. 41. I will take delight in them to do what is good for them. And with all my heart and mind, I will faithfully plant them in this land. God has something for us, but we have some things to do. Things are conditional. If you go to the bank and you want a loan, you have to sign a contract. It's conditional. Everything legal is conditional. If you, do this, if you don't do this, I'm going to take your car. If you don't pay your monthly loans, I'm going to take your house, take your land, take your car. Whatever it is that you go to the bank for legal. You're, let me just... Piggyback there. Everybody understand that. Get a loan, you better keep up that payment or them come take whatever in your house. You understand that. So there are terms and conditions. And the Lord is saying to us that there are terms and conditions of the covenant that he made with us. It's not a free for all. I get saved. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. I can do anything because I'm going into heaven. The devil is a liar. Right? Let me tell you what the devil do. He know the word, you know. So he used that same word that who the son says free is free indeed. And then piggyback on that and you're a free man. I can go, go to the party, go to the club, and just come to church. Hallelujah. I'm free. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. Like what we're talking about, Gilgal. But God knows that there's needs a Gilgal experience in this church. You're going tired for you or stop about it. Because we leaders, we don't want to whom much is given, much is required. So you could have chat about me. And what wrong with her? She can't stop talking about Gilgal or circumcision of the heart. Look here, I don't have to answer to you. I answer to him. And I have to obey him. 
So if he says this is what needs to happen, it's going to happen. And when I go to him, I'm going to say, Diane, well done. In the face of those who rebelled against you, well done, Diane. That's what I want to hear. So you know what? As somebody and I were talking this morning, it is a you and I experience with God. Not you and I. Every one of us have to look within and up to God. So if you don't want to follow me, now it's God and you. It's not God and the leadership of this church. Leadership getting it right. And we're going to do as much as God tells us to do. Every individual in here online listening to me or in this house need to do this for themselves. I cannot go to heaven and say, boy, let me just start. Jody, I didn't like how Jody talked to me. And she called me not to come to church. Huh? I'd be a mad woman before God. It is time for us to stop talking about church hurt. Thank you, Jesus. God is tired of hearing about who hurts you in church. And that's why I'm going to stop coming at church. Because when them hurt you at work, you still get up every morning and make sure you go to work early or else you're going to get your pink slip. So this going on too long. I in this church 39 years and I used to go to church before. So we know about church hurt. So we name it. But tell me where in society people don't hurt you. Tell me. Family hurt you. Get up and walk out of your family. If you go to the hospital and you need attention but the nurse never treat you right. You go and get up and walk out. You sit down there and wait for the doctor to come see you, don't it? Because your belly hurting you, you're having running stomach. Oh, Jesus, help me in this house this morning. You sit down there, as much as you're mad, you sit down there because you want to be attended to by the doctor. Am I talking the truth this morning? So when I talk about the Gilgal experience or circumcision of the heart, this is what God is talking about. Because we hurt each other, and boy, me can't bother you know, because, you know, and, and then you gather people around you, and then you take yourself, my God, my God, my God, and go to somebody else's church and carry that same hurt into their church. And God is tired of it. God is saying, stop playing church in my church. Because this church is who God is building. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of Jesus Christ on this hill. Come and go. Come and go. Come and go. We're happy to see you. But it's time to stop it. And for those who are online and you're staying far, it's time to be in the house of God. We are a family. The blood of Jesus has hung on that. When he hung on that blood flow and his side was pierced, the church was born out of that. That means when you accept him as Jesus Christ, you are now heir and joint heir, every one of us, to the son of God Almighty. That makes us brothers and sisters in Christ. That's who we are. We're not strangers. The Bible says that. We're not aliens anymore. The Bible says that. It's not Diane Fletcher talking to you now. We are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We're neither male nor female. We're a holy nation, a royal people. We are the people of God. We are the people of God in the house this morning. Clap your hands onto him.
I'm only his vessel. He is talking to me because I have problems too. But he must have to fix me before I can stand before you. It is time for us to get it right with God, not with me. When you get it right with God, you'll be able to look at Andrea and say, Hi, Andrea. If, even if she upset me, I can smile with her same way because I dealt with it. How many of us deal with things? How many of us deal with things before we come in the house of God where the rest of our family, the family of God, come together? How many of us? Or we come into the house of God and we have a people. That praise doesn't reach heaven. It bounces on the roof and drops right back on you like a big boulder. Boy, I did see her. Boy, I'm going to tell you, say, oh, what she have on? So all those sort of things need to stop in the house of God. All of those things need to stop. Our eyes are to be fixed on him. You come in here, hallelujah, praise the Lord. The song's supposed to move you from one place to another in the spirit realm. No wonder God is saying, four months of Gilgal, when we get rid of the garbage that we come in here. This is a hospital, yes, spiritual hospital, but we who are around long time, fix yourself at home and come in here. I will give them one heart, a new heart, and I will put a new spirit within them. And I will take the stony heart. What I just described is the stony heart that we have. Unnatural, hardened heart. Why? That they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them. And do them, church. And do them. They must come off here and come in here. Do them. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. God the Father planned for his chosen people. Chosen people in the house? To enter into a blood covenant with him. It's a relationship. And if you're having a relationship with anyone, you want to do something to please them. Married people, we know what that is. And if you're not doing something, then the marriage broke up. Even though you're still in the same house. You have to do things to please each other. That's a relationship. It's not a one-sided thing. That's a covenant. It's two people. So even though Jesus hung on the cross, he still expects us, church, to do things. The covenant is our guarantee that every promise he has given us will be fulfilled. It is the title deed of our inheritance. And this inheritance came through our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who proclaimed the conditions. Let's go there. Overhead, turn to John 14. John chapter 14. There are specific covenant promises, church. Hallelujah. You have your Bible, church? John chapter 14. John chapter 14. We're going to stay there a little bit and jump into verses. If anyone loves me, Jesus said, not John, not Peter, not Paul, not James, John 14.23 wrote what Jesus said. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. John 14 verse 23. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. If you're not keeping his word, then I have to question, according to the word of God, do you love God? John 14, 16 to 17. John 14, 16 to 17. And I... We'll ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. He is the spirit of truth. The world is unable to receive him because he doesn't see him or know him. But you do know him because he remains with you and will be in you. That's one of the gifts we get when we receive the covenant. And he would send his Holy Spirit what does the Holy Spirit do? To lead and guide us into all truth. 
to reveal God's will to us and teach us all things. The Holy Spirit is within you and I to give us the will, the power, and the ability to walk in obedience to God Almighty. The Holy Spirit is within us to give us dunamis miracle power of God. The Holy Spirit is within us to give us power over all the power of the enemy. To give us power over sin. To conform us into the exact image of Christ. That's the Holy Spirit's job. To give us the power and the authority to do even greater works that I spoke of earlier. The greater works we all, not, can't even call these people name because they're under criticism all over the world. Not your leadership alone. Not those who have, you have watched for years on television and think they, one, can do miracles. God has put his spirit inside of us and we, as long as we obey him, he's given us his name, the name which is above every name. And that name, Jesus, has power. And all we have to do is believe in that name and speak, and it shall be so. So he has given us the power and authority to do even greater works, to give us the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit, and to minister healing and deliverance to the world. So not a certain set of people to do it. All of us to the world. You know where the world is? Where you go. That's the world. Your job. In the taxi. I didn't. I went to the doctor the other day, and that lady looked at me after I was sharing something with her, and she said, "Boy, Mrs. Fletcher, I must tell you this. From the day you entered my office about two years ago, I saw something different on you. Who wants to hear things like that? I wasn't doing anything. I just talked normal." I talk practically about certain things, what I believe, how I trust the Lord, and so on. And that woman, after I shared just two weeks ago or last week, tell me that something is on me. There is something you're different. Who wants to hear that? You don't need a platform. People must be able to see the difference on you, church. So, and that comes only through the power of the Holy Spirit. Another condition God has given us is that we would have power and authority in his name. John chapter 14, 13 to 14. It says, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. 14. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Do you, you see anything else there? If you ask. You. Who is you? I'm the you. If you ask anything in my name. And this is also found in John 16, 23 and 24. Please take your notes or rewatch this because this is important for us as we go through Gilgal. So church, whatever we ask, whatever, what is the whatever though? It's not just money. It's not just for promotion. It's not for land. It's not for husband. It's not for wife. Whatever we ask for, those are the frills and the thrills of life. Whatever we ask for, how to deal with our soulish realm, our fleshly realm that we're unable to control, that needs to go through the Gilgal experience. Whatever we ask for, God, I can't do this, but help me. God is going to be painful, but help me. Let me apply it here. So not just, I want, boy, I want that promotion. God, I want you to give it to me. When it don't come, boy, God, you disappoint me. God don't disappoint nobody. God is God and sovereign and holy. Magnificent in all his ways. Why would he disappoint you when he sent his only begotten son over 2,000 years ago? To hang on that cross and shed his blood. To be whipped as nobody could recognize him as a human being. Why would he turn around and disappoint us after that? What kind of God is that that we're serving? Come on church, let's wake up and realize that God the Father loves us so much. So maybe we're not doing something right. If you're asking a miss. Let me not go there though. So... We need to help, ask the Lord to help us. 
Because many of us, church, are prisoners of addictive behavior. We feel overwhelmed and we feel hopeless and we feel like whatever we're doing can't be broken. God alone knows, you know, He's still on the throne. You think God don't see when you cry at night and say, Boy, God, we never meant to do this, but I did it. Can you forgive me, Lord? Anybody know about that? That's why the Lord said, Vengeance is mine. Because none of us, we can't see the action here, but we don't want the person to go home and cry and say, God, help me here, Lord. But as we in RTF know that we have to renounce and break agreement with all that we have agreed with the devil about. So habits can be broken, let me tell you that. But we feel it can't be broken. So we hold on to what, let me say, is a crutch. You know those crutches that we can't see? Is the addictions, right? And we, that is what brings us satisfaction in life. It don't last. Anybody can tell me about what lasts? It lasts? Take a drink here, take a drink there, take a puff here, hang out with some people, gossip, laugh, hang out at the, the bar, whatever. Is it, does it last? No, it doesn't. By the time you go home, the problems are the same place that you left them. So it's just a crutch. And it just brings satisfaction for a moment. You think it's sustaining you, but it is not sustaining you. It is only pulling you under. All the extramarital sex that we have, all the pornography, all the drinking and the unhealthy relationships that we have, all the negative self-talk, the overspending. Let me pause right there because me know about that. When me and my husband was having problems 30 odd years ago, in the first 12 years of my marriage, oh my God, I never had no money problem. Jody and I went and shopped for foolishness to ease my, what they call it? They have a name for it, you know, like how people eat. Eat sweets to help your cravings. Who showed that out? <laughs> you, okay, yeah. Yes. So I, I, I know about the overspending. That don't happen to me again because I'm resting in Jesus, right? I mean, I talk about overspending. Buy what you don't need because you just need to fill this little thing inside of you. You're hurting, you just go spend some money and then head hurt you when you have to pay back that the credit card. Overworking, self-pity, controlling people through anger, through fear. Church, I'm here to tell you those are only coping mechanisms. You only cope. Well, by, by the time you wake up next morning, I need another drink. I need something else. I need to go back. I saw that shoe. Or you go online. Mm, I need that. And when it comes, Lord, you don't even fit. Spend your money where you don't need to spend it. It's a coping mechanism. When God wants you to surrender to him everything and he will take care of it because he's still on the throne with a name above all names. All these things have you trapped. And the only cure lies with yourself and God. The only cure for all of this and then some, is it lies between me and God and you and God. I can only deliver the word and it's up to you to go home tonight or him talking to you right there in your seat. And you go home and say, Lord, I heard this. You know where I am weak, Lord God. And I ask, I surrender it to you. All that are carrying on as a burden, I take it off you and I lay it at your feet. Cast all your cares upon me, says God. And take up his yoke, which is easy, which is light. When in the old covenant days, the Israelites did not have direct access to God. It was necessary for them to go through a priest, a high priest. Only the high priest could go in. And if that high priest went in and had sin in them, they dropped down dead. So nobody else could go in there. So the priest went with a rope around and bells rope around, and if they stop hearing the bells of people outside, they know him dead. And then we'd have to pull him out because they couldn't go in there. What has the new covenant done for us? It has told us that we can come boldly into the throne room of God. Will you give God some praise right now? We can come boldly into his throne room. 
into the Holy of Holies. We have direct access, Church on the Rock. The veil was ripped from top to bottom, not bottom. That means it was a holy rip. I don't know about you, but it can't be that quiet, church. This is something remarkable that Jesus did for us. And you know why he did it? Because he and the Father are one. And they agreed on how he could restore the relationship back to the Father. My God, I don't know about you, but it excites me that Jesus Christ obeyed. And the only time he said, if this cup could be taken from me, was when he thought that he would be separated from his Father when he bore our sins. But he said, nevertheless. Nevertheless, that is how much God loves us, church. That is how much Jesus loves us. It's an unconditional love. But that does not mean we must sit down, cock our foot with the dirt on us. With the hardened heart. With the rebellious ways. The veil was ripped from top to bottom. And Jesus gave us his name. He promised us that whatever we ask in his name, he will do it. There are no limitations put on what we could ask for church. In essence, Emmanuel, God with us was saying, I am giving you my name. Whatever you need in your life, whatever problems that must be solved, whatever you ask in my name and keep on asking. The point is that we, the Lord says, keep on asking means that we have to keep on asking. This is not a fry fish shop with God. He's not some Christmas Santa Claus sugar daddy. He's God the Father that is not to be mocked. Whatever we ask when we don't get to keep on asking. There's a reason why it don't come right away. Because if it come right away, we will get all puffed up. The humility would not be there. That's one reason. He also said in John 14, 2, a provision made that he was preparing a place for us where we would be with him. And John 14, 3 says that he would come again. And we see the signs that he's coming again. Pastor Opal got that. We see the signs that he's coming again. The enemy has turned up the heat all over the world. What do his people do? Look up, draw close, work out your salvation. Another term of saying, circumcise your heart. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. No matter what you see, what you hear, pray for your family, pray for each other. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling and look up. We don't know when he's coming, but he's certainly coming soon. There's too much stuff going on. Too much stuff going on in this world that looks cocky and crazy. And that is a sign that the Holy Spirit, once he takes his spirit out of this place, all hell is going to break. But you know what is glorifying about that? We would be gone too. But it is leading up to that church. So why are we sitting down just like any old thing? He's coming very soon. So on a day like today, 2,000 years ago, the gospel describes the day in details. The sun was darkened and heaven thundered. For a moment, they thought it had conquered. But it wasn't over. Tell somebody, it's not over until God says it's over. Understand what still had stolen. Right there from in the garden of Eden, sin came in. Once and for all, he tore the veil wide open from top to bottom, making no power stronger than his. No power is stronger than his, church. I would give him praise right now. I don't care what devil is facing you. No power is stronger than his. He gave us a name above all names. His name is what? Jesus, who reigns with a name above all names. Church, buried and risen. He gave us a new beginning, alive and breathing. Are you breathing, church? 
and, as, and he is seated, and we are seated in him. Give the Lord praise. His miraculous blood applied to every circumstance of our life. Glory to his name. That's all the privilege we have when we receive him. His death means all of that. There is nothing that can rise against the victory over hell, death, and the grave. Nothing, because Jesus conquered it all. There is no name higher, church, no name greater, for the cross still stands. His blood still flows, church. The work is finished. It is done. Can you sing us? Uh, yes. And the rest of the singers can come. They know the song. Yes, let the singers come back. The cross still stands, church. His blood still flows. His work is finished. Hallelujah. His work is finished. And guess what, church? Hell still knows, Alicia. Hell still knows. The promise over your life is yes and amen. You got to hold on to that no matter what. Amen? The grave is still empty. The grave is still empty, church. He's not in the grave. The grave is still empty. The stone is still rolled. He is still high and lifted up. Hallelujah. And he's still seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lord about that. He is still seated on the throne. The Bible says every voice will proclaim there is no higher name. No higher name. Jesus still reigns. The name above all names. An apostle wrote, Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians 1, 18 to 23. I want that up there, but I'm going to lead. Ephesians 1, 18 to 23. Just follow me. Ephesians 1, 18 to 23 says, Apostle Paul wrote it. He says, we pray that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. That's what the prayer is over this church. That your eyes of understanding will be enlightened. That you may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe. And according to his might, the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. He is far above all principalities, hallelujah, and power, and might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but in the world to come, hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. He is far above all principalities, and power, and might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but in the world that is to come. And God has put all things, all things, church, all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things, which is the church, his body, the fullness which filleth all in all. That's the word of God. Do you believe it? Colossians 1, 15 to 19. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created, whether they are in heaven, whether they are on earth, whether they are visible or invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things, say all things, are created by him and for him. And he is before all things. Mama, Masata, Lokorovich. He is before all things. And through him, all things consist. Give him praise, church on the rock. Through him, all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father. Hallelujah. It pleased the Father. Hallelujah. It pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell. Philippians 2, 9 and 11. And wherefore? And wherefore? God has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name, stand to your feet, and that at the name, hallelujah, 
given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Oh, Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus Christ is Lord. Say it with me, church. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Brothers and sisters in this house and online, shout with one voice, one voice. Church on the rock, online viewers and in the house. Let's lift up the name which is above every name. The name above all names is what? Jesus. Let's say it. Jesus. Let's say it again. Jesus. Let's say it again. Jesus. Let's say Jesus Christ, you are Lord. Jesus Christ, you are Lord. Shout his name again, church. Jesus Christ. He is still on the throne. He is still on the throne. Tell yourself, he is still on the throne. God alone is on the throne. God alone is on the throne. If you don't know this church, in these days and weeks and years to come, you better know it. Praise God, we don't have to hide to read the Bible. But there are some countries that you have to hide and they tear off a page and hide it in their pocket. They're found with any scripture. They're sent to prison. And we who have the liberty to worship God in a house, we stay home on the bed, gone everywhere we want to go. And there are countries that they're whipped and imprisoned for even saying the name of Jesus. Can I hear his name again? Jesus. I remind you, church. I want Jody to grab a mic. I want Rachel to grab a mic. Hallelujah. We're going to do a tag team of walking out some things in this church. Hallelujah. God has called us to a Gilgal experience. It's a time to cut away the things in our hearts that are not of him. Church, are we ready? Are we ready? As the singers sing this song, I want you to consider what's going on in your heart. Remember what the heart is, the soulish realm, the emotions, the will. And as they are finished, we're going to tag team and call out some things in this house this morning. You understand what I'm going to do? Amen. So go ahead.
personal between you and the Holy Spirit. You and the Holy Spirit. It's not about anybody else right now. You just lift your hands. There is a spirit of disappointment in the house, anger, fear. There's control. There's definitely rebellion in the house, unsubmissiveness. There's mistrust. There's some grief, deep wounds in the house. God wants, God is seeing it. And he knows you see it too. He wants to address it today. I'm going to pray, but with your own mouth, I want you to repent for hiding it, yes. for not vocalizing it yes. to God, for not confessing it, whatever it is. I'm going to pray, but you're going to identify them for yourself. Father, we thank you for exposing with your word, oh God. We thank you, Jesus. You came to set us free. Your very name indeed is Redeemer, oh God. You came to redeem us from our sins. You came to heal us, heal our broken hearts and bind up our wounds, oh God. Father, even as you go through the aisles of this church, even now, God, you go through the aisles of this church. You yes, see Lord. every heart, God. Yeah. Father, confront every heart. Let there be no hiding in this moment, oh God. No hiding. Father, we just uproot right now. We address that strong man of pain, that strong man of rebellion. We bind that spirit right now and we command you to loose them from every pain that they're experiencing right now that your healing may come to them. That the truth about the situations that they're encountering will come to them right yes, now Lord. in the name yes, of Lord. Jesus. Yes, Lord. You said it's your truth that sets us free. Yes, Lord. Even now, God, mm. confront the lie in yes, their Lord, minds. God. There is a lie that the enemy is dragging them astray. God, you know the lie, the ungodly belief. Whatever that belief is right now, God, confront it in them. The unloved feeling that you don't care, that you don't see what the problem is. There are some of them saying, how long am I going to endure this? Are you not hearing my prayer? I've been asking, I've been knocking, I've been seeking. God, you know what they're experiencing. Those who feel unseen, rejected. Yes. Oh God, those holding on to the abuse and the trauma that they're unable to forget and to start the new beginning, oh God. You know of the unforgiveness, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus, the burden, the anxiety, the sleepless nights, the tormenting thoughts. God, loose your people now in the name of Jesus from this torment and anxiety, oh God. Loose the minds of your people even now, God. Jesus, come and bring your truth into their minds, God. We command the spirits of heaviness to lift up off of them now in the name of Jesus. You spirit of heaviness. We command you to get out of this house in the name, in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. We yes, address Lord. you and we see you. Yes. We see the division in the house. Yes. The lack of communication in the house. Yes. We see you in the name of Jesus. Yes, the Lord. confusion, we command you to get, get out, out now in the name, in the name of, Jesus. of Jesus. We declare that we will stand together in unity in our families. Yes, Lord. In this house, in our jobs, we will stand to believe your truth, oh God, that sets us free. Oh God, equip, equip our hearts, uplift our hearts, oh God. The brokenness, the heartbreak, the losses, oh God. We ask you to come and heal it, oh God. Yes, Lord. Heal it, Jesus. Thank it you, was Lord. not Thank for you, nothing. Lord. The pain wasn't for nothing, oh God. Jesus, you are saying this too shall pass. This too shall pass. Oh, Father, even as you're speaking to your people, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for healing their hearts. That they will endure. Give them a spirit of endurance right now. Endure to the end, people of God. Endure to the end. This season you're going through is not for nothing. 
The Lord is teaching us how to wage a warfare, to stand on his yes. promises and his truth. Yes, it is in that place of believing, having faith, that we will see the goodness of the Lord. Jesus, increase our faith in this Gilgal season, oh God. We surrender. We surrender to the Spirit of God right now. We surrender. We say, God, all the fighting we're fighting. All the disrespect, God, that we've sought to you, oh God. We've cursed you. We've been angry, oh God. Anything we've done to offend you, God, convict us in our spirits even now. That we would cut it away from our hearts. Cut it away from our hearts, oh God. We confess it. So people of God, just confess it. I confess it. I confess and renounce rebellion. I confess and renounce anxiety. I confess and renounce fear. I confess and renounce every spirit of rejection. Every spirit of hurt. I renounce you. Bitterness. I renounce you. In the name of Jesus, I want no part of you. So, Father, we thank you. We receive healing in its place, God. We choose to release it. We cannot go from here. We cannot go from here, God. We will wrestle right now. We are wrestling in our spirit, oh God. We're wrestling in our spirit, Jesus. We're wrestling to let you go, oh God. We're wrestling, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 As I'm standing there, I hear the Lord saying to, you know, offense to deal with the spirit of offense. And when our pastor spoke about the church hurt, because offense, we've been offended by words that have spoken to us and towards us in hurtful words and things that have been done and it hinder us and we are stuck in one place and God is calling you to come and do a work and join the ministry and do this work because you've been hurt before you are offended but how things was done so today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth every spirit of offense that have hindered us that have got us stuck in one spot that we cannot move forward each time we're taking one foot forward and we move backward ten foot backward but today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth we renounce and we break the hold of offense over the people of God in the name of Jesus every hurt and disappointment that hold us stuck in one place that we cannot move forward in the things of God the things that plague our mind and the, the enemy use it and play in our mind over and over in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth we lose ourselves from every offensive word every word today that have the enemy used like a mirror to keep us from doing the will of God the purpose that God called us into so today, in the name of Jesus, we release those that have heard us, those that have said word, oh God, to keep us in a one spot. So, Father, we lose ourselves from every word, oh God. Ramasata, yemesete, dromo, where the womb, oh God, is so deep, oh God. We through the forgiveness and as we walk away my God the enemy you said oh God the same word to keep us oh God from going backward but today in the name of Jesus every backward spirit we cancel your assignment your lies of the people of God in the name of Jesus as we are in Gilgad we say God circumcise our hearts oh God break that full flesh oh God that hinder us God from moving into your will and your purpose for our lives oh God we are tired of excuses oh God we find all kind of excuses oh God to give to keep us from doing what you call us to do while we in Gilgal we lay bare before you 
every spirit of offense, oh God, where we have been offended by words and misunderstood. So in the name of Jesus, bring healing to the heart and the mind of your people, God. Oh, Jesus, you move among us. You survey in our heart. Lord, how can you keep us, my God, or stand in a fence, oh God, that when we don't even know what's in the heart, but unless you come, Father, by the power of your Holy Spirit, oh God, and show us what's in our hearts, oh God, expose the heart, oh God, every wrongful motives in our hearts, oh God, expose Pose it, Lord, that we will be free to walk in the purpose, oh God, that you have written about our lives, oh God. So, spirit of offense, get out. Spirit of offense, get out. Get out. Too long, too long you sit over the lives of people of God. Oh, Father. Free your people today. Free us, oh God, Ramasanda, that we will walk in freedom of what your word say about us, oh God, that we will walk in freedom, oh God, on our purposes. So Holy Spirit, bring healing. Bring healing. Bring healing. You have spoken. And we heard you, God. You have spoken. And we heard you. No one can say they did not know. Because we heard your word. Now, Father, the grace. Spirit of grace. The ability to walk your word out. The ability to walk it out, Holy Ghost. We know it is not in our might. It is not in our power. You say it's by your spirit, God. Holy Spirit, undergird your people. That when you put your finger on something in our heart, that we will not give excuses. We will repent. We will renounce. And we will break the strongholds off of our lives. Because you have given us your weapon the blood to cleanse us God your name that is the authority for us oh we bless you we believe we believe we believe we believe and help our unbeliefs today in the name of Jesus hallelujah 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 what God was showing me is that there are people take God has taken me back into your childhood days. That there are people who have grown up feeling rejected, feeling abandoned. Mommy and daddy didn't care enough. And that hurt is there. Now you have become Christians. And that hurt still lingers. And it has become part of the hardened heart that God wants to break up. That rejected heart, that rejected, abandoned person became a Christian and came into the church. And there's a multiplication of abandoned feelings of people, rejected people, and the hurt people hurt people and the Lord wants us to deal with this we didn't get rejected in the church we got rejected from at school from in the home sometimes from in the womb and that rejected spirit comes upon us the devil is not going to say oh this is a little baby let's leave them alone that devil know that your mommy and daddy perhaps didn't want you he didn't plan for you but you are now in the womb and that Rejection is upon you as a spirit. That you as a baby cried all day, probably frustrated your mother and your father with your crying. And 
everything that happened as a child, you grew up, grew up. You grew up with it. You become a big person now, an adult, but that's still lingering. God wants us to deal with it today. Jacob, in the Bible, his name meant con man. His name meant deceiver. And if you check his storyline, he was constantly conning people. He conned his brother, he conned his father. And many, many years after, like a day like today, he decided to come before the Lord and say, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And he wrestled all night with the angel of the Lord, which is Jesus Christ incarnate. And as he wrestled, he said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. That was an all day, all night. That could be just your all day, all night, or it could be months, four months of wrestling with God to get rid of what has been shrouding you. And the Lord said to Jacob, what is your name? Do we think God did not know his name? God knew his name. But God wanted Jacob to admit himself. My name is Jacob. My name is Conman. My name is Deceive and Deceptor. When J Jacob said, my name is Jacob, right away, right away, surely right away, the Lord said, no longer. Who wants a no longer in the house? Who wants a no longer? The moment you admit, it's what I call admitting. Admit who you are. I am disappointed. I am full of rage. I am full of anger. I am full of shame. I am full of frustration. I'm full of bound emotions. I'm full of scandal. I'm full of offense. I'm full of deception. I have been deceiving people. I play people. I'm full of denial. I have issues. God Almighty, God Almighty knows. He knows already, church, who we are. Like Jacob. But it's for us to admit who we are. To face yourself. Confront yourself and say, I am no longer. God, this is who I am. And you nailed everything. Pride. Arrogance. There are arrogant people in this church. God wants it changed. He wants to give you a name change. But it's up to you and I to admit who we are. If you can't remember anything else, this little moment, remember Jacob. Remember also Adam and Eve. That God came down and knew that they were hiding and he said, where are you? Is God blind? God knows where every place you hide. And he said, where are you? Church on the Rock is asking this question to you right now. Online he's saying, where are you? Where are you? What are you hiding? You can't hide from me, says God. But it's time for us to give up and surrender to him and say, I am. And then he'll say, no longer. Are we ready to do that? Well, will you stand with me, please? Hallelujah. Before I lead you in a prayer, you said it. I believe it. It is done. Let's just sing that a couple times. Get our hearts right back up. If you could stand for me, I would really love that because we're in the presence of God right now. Sovereign and holy God he is. Hallelujah. Go ahead. You said it. I believe it. You
just surrender. This is what I know. Because if a good man ever comes and says, take it off, yeah, and go right away. You're in the presence of Almighty God. And God is asking for a surrendered heart. This is the day, the start of a wrestling with God. This is the start of a wrestling with God. I want to pre-warn you. Disclaimer, if you want to call it that. This is just a start. Because whatever it is that has shrouded you for years, that you have lived with, it is going to take a peeling away. A peeling away daily. Little by little. This is a start. Are you ready, church? With your hands raised, say, Father, I come in no other name but the name of Jesus. The name which is above every name. And I renounce and break agreement with the demonic stronghold of rejection and all that comes with it. I renounce your hold on my life rejection. I break that hold right now in Jesus' name. I take authority over rejection. I appropriate the work of the cross to you right now rejection. Self-rejection. Self-rejection. Expected rejection, Expected rejection, fear of rejection, fear of rejection perceived, rejection, perceived rejection. I break your hold over my life. I break your hold over my life. I apply the finished work of cross to you. I apply the finished and I say to you, get out of my life right now. Come up and out of me. In the name of Jesus. I renounce and break every agreement I've had with the spirit of abandonment. Lord God, I take authority over every emotional abandonment that I've ever experienced. I place the work of the cross to you. Abandonment. I say get out of my life right now. Out of my life right now. It is done. It is done. It is finished. It is finished. The work is complete. The work is complete. There is an unconditional love there is an unconditional that God has for me. That God has for me. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. Who does not receive me? Who does not receive me? My heavenly father. My heavenly father. Receive me. Receive me. Father God. Father God. Help me. To walk this out, that I am loved by you, it is unconditional. It is an unfailing love. It is not conditional. It is not conditional. Nothing, I say nothing, can separate me from the love of God. No height, no depth. As far as the east is from the west, so you love me, Lord. And thank you, Lord, and thank you, for removing Lord, this from me. For removing this in the name, from of, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want to speak to deception. Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce and break. I renounce and break every agreement, every agreement that I've had with the spirit of deception. Including blindness. Including blindness. Spiritual blindness. Spiritual blindness. Confusion. Confusion. Identity crisis. Identity crisis. Gender identity Gender issues. Identity issues. Self denial. Self denial. Unfaithfulness. Unfaithfulness. Untrustworthiness. I renounce the hold you have on my life. I renounce the hold you have on my life. Now, church of the world, deception is a blocker for every deliverance. So I want you to say it with authority. I renounce you, deception. I renounce you, deception. I renounce you, deception. I renounce you, deception. I renounce everything that comes along, deception. I renounce everything that comes along. I break your hold over my life. Break your hold over my life. You will no longer deceive me. You will no longer deceive me. I will no longer have part of you. I will no longer have part with you. I don't belong to Satan anymore. I don't belong to Satan. Satan is the deceiver. Satan is a deceiver. The Lord God is God of truth. Lord God is God of truth. I accept truth in my life. I accept truth in my life. And I renounce the hold of deception. I renounce the hold of deception. I appropriate the work of the cross right now to deception. And I say to you, deception, and all the spirits and baggage that come along with it, 
get out of my life now. Say to the authority church, get out of my life right now. Get out of my life deception. Amen. If you feel like deception, go give God a praise right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to deal with one more. Shame. Shame. There are things that have happened to us in life. From we were a little bit, whether the teacher called you a dunce, somebody said you don't have no sense at all, you fool, fool. Some, some of you, doctor tell you, say, can I have a child? Shame of that. Shame of what your husband or your wife did to you. Shame. Shame. Shame came from in the Garden of Eden. And shame still lingers on God's people. Are you ready to renounce that hold over your life? Shame that you can't break a habit. This is between you and God. Shame that you're believing for healing and healing won't come. Shame. Shame that you owe money and can't pay. Shame. Raise your hands. Pray in the spirit, church. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Shame, shame, shame. Shame makes us pretend that all is well when it is not well. Shame. God wants to give us no more shame. It was already done. It is, you said it. I believe it. You said it. It is done. But we're still walking around with shame. Are you ready to renounce and break the hold of shame on your life? Can I hear amen or quietness? Which one? Hallelujah. Say, in the name of Jesus, I renounce and break the demonic stronghold of shame. Include shame of being different. Shame of humiliation. Shame of embarrassment. Shame of sexual corruption. Sexual sins. Sexual bondage. Shame. I renounce your hold right now. I renounce guilt of what I've done. I break connections with you. I appropriate the work of the cross to you. I say shame. Shame. You will have no part of you me any longer. No I speak to shame right now. I, speak to shame right I say I appropriate the work of the cross. I appropriate it's, the a work of the cross. it's a work. finished work. I say to you with authority that Lord Jesus has given me. Get up and out of me right now. Shame go right now. In the name of Jesus. Shame go. Shame go. Shame go in Jesus' name. Father God. Say with Can you bring the music down? Father God. Father God. Help me. Help me. To recognize. To recognize. When the thief is coming after me. Satan is a thief. He comes to steal. He comes to steal. Kill and destroy. Kill and destroy. Do you believe that, church? Yes. Let's say it again. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus. To recognize, to recognize the, thief the thief when he's coming into my borders. He's coming into my borders. As a matter of fact, Lord, Lord help me. Help to build a hedge of protection around the borders of my life. And whenever I see the thief trying to jump the borders, open my eyes to see the thief. Because he's coming to steal, kill, and destroy me. But you have come to give me life. Over 2,000 years ago, I now receive that life and life more abundantly. So thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. I believe, Lord God, I believe that whatever God, was prayed this day whatever was prayed is gone day, from me. Is gone from in me. the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I just thank you, Lord God, to help your people to yes, build that hedge. The hedge is the word of God. To build the hedge around them, Lord God. I pray a prayer shield around everyone 
Lord God, who renounce and broke agreement with the enemy that came through different doors. I renounce and break the hold of the enemy over God's people's lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, mighty God, for giving your people strength, strength from this moment onwards to recognize what is coming at them. Open their eyes, Lord God. Paul, you prayed it that we would understand and know what is happening around us. Lord, open our spiritual eyes, Lord God. Lord, help us to move from the physical into the spiritual realm, Lord God, to see the enemy at work in our lives. It's not my brother, it's not my sister, it's not my husband, it's not my wife. We are not having an argument with flesh and blood but with spiritual wickedness in high places. And Lord Jesus, you told us that every spiritual wickedness is under your feet and we are in you, so they're under our feet too. God, keep our minds focused on you to know who we are in Christ Jesus and know the power that you have given us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God, that you're still on the throne and you have given a name which is above every name and you have given us the authority to use that name. And so in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare a blessing upon everyone that has renounced and broken the enemy's agreement with them. Lord God, I thank you that we're, we're entering into and walking out that new covenant with you, Lord God. Lord God, give us purpose, Lord God, daily to see, to break, to uproot all the things that are not of you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for the blessings of today. Thank you, Lord God. Take us through the tomorrow and bring us back here on Sunday to celebrate the resurrection of you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that, Lord, we didn't bury you today, Lord God, but we showed forth what you came to do, Lord God. So we praise your name. We clap our hands unto God and we shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout the name. Jesus. Jesus, say Jesus, 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 hallelujah. Let's stretch our hands to Pastor Diane. If you love this woman, you would have known she put time into seeking God. I watched her prepare and there were many distractions, but she was so steadfast. You have no idea what your pastor goes through. She has to manage a church, plus seek God's face for herself and for the church. It takes time. So I want you to stretch your hand towards her with all the love you can find in your heart for her, to cover her because she delivered a word today. So, Father, right now, we thank you for your woman servant, your servant who spent time in your word to come and hear from you, God. We thank you that she was at your feet to receive of you living water that she was able to pour out today with all strength of the Holy Spirit, oh God. We thank you that she made herself a base that you could come in your power through her, that there was no hesitation. She came, oh God, to do a mission and an assignment that even things she never made meant to say oh god you led her to say because it was all holy spirit so father we ask you to put a hedge of protection round and about her oh god surround her territory oh god surround her spirit man oh god surround her soul god her mind her will her emotion god we declare it is intact no weapon formed against her shall ever prosper we condemn every spoken word uttered against her we condemn it we nullify we declare her husband, Apostle Francis, safe. No weapon as a result of this deliverance of this message shall be attacked at this family, oh God. We counterattack it no, with the weapons of our warfare, which is not carnal. And we plead the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus, the efficacious blood that is potent and powerful against the weapons of the enemy. I declare she... Pastor Diane, Apostle France, her family, her children, her grandchildren are hidden and safe. And none of the things that she spoke about will ever be a weapon against her family, God. So we declare blessings upon her. Blessings upon her family, oh God. Richly fulfill her in all her desires that she is crying out for you for. So Lord, we thank you for her. And we continue to pray for her, oh God. Keep her safe in spirit, in body, in good health, in good shape, in all the, the vigors of her mind. She will be able to have clear thinking, God. Good sleep. 
refresh her, oh God. Give her peace of mind in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming today. We celebrate and we praise God for this word. And we thank this woman of God. Bless you, Pastor Dan. So we're going to leave with worship. You can lead us into worship as we leave happily. In Jesus' name. There is power. 